So in this video, we learn about population and settlement. Okay, in Ghana, arrangement of house or buildings is not in one particular order. In some places, the buildings, um, the buildings are far apart. This means that the houses are not close to each other. It is common in many villages in Ghana. Examples can be found in the northern regions of Ghana. In other places, the houses are arranged in line form. This pattern is common in towns and cities where the estate builders or estate buildings are arranged in a line form. Examples are in Tema, Accra and Senet Flat in Sunyani. So apart from um, the two mentioned, there is another settlement pattern where the buildings are built up in core area. It looks like the houses are in groups. From the above discussion, can you, can you define settlement patterns? So settlement pattern refers to the way, um, to the way that buildings and houses are distributed in a community. So that's the meaning. So let's look at, let's go to um, this, uh, the description of the nature of settlement patterns in Ghana. So the nature of settlement in Ghana is grouped into three. So these are nucleated or built up settlement, dispersed or scattered settlement, and last one, the linear or ribbon settlement. So let's look at them and discuss them. Look at some of the, the diagrams of nucleated, dispersed, and linear settlement. So let's discuss the nucleated or built up settlement. Nucleated settlements are settlements where build, uh, buildings are close together, often clustered around a central point. They often grow around a, a road junction or a river crossing. The location of the nucleated settlement can be determined by easy access to basic needs such as water supply, markets, and etc. So if you look on the board, the diagram of nucleated settlement have been drawn. We have road. If you look at the key, every diagram or a map must have what? A key. So my key, if you see box there, is what? It's houses. And the lines are what? Roads. Double lines are roads. Okay, so now that we are done with nucleated settlement, let's go to the spares. Settlement. Look at how it is, it is drawn. So dispersed, dispersed settlement or scattered settlement. Dispersed settlement is the type of settlement where the houses are scattered over a wild, a wide area. The houses are far apart from one another, and the hamlets and villages are small. So if you look at the diagram, they are widely what apart. The houses are widely apart so this house this house is widely apart from this widely apart from this widely apart from this so if you look at the key this is the key the box is what our house okay okay now that we have known how to draw uh, this first settlement let's go to our last settlement which is the linear or ribbon settlement okay linear settlement a linear settlement is a type of settlement whereby the houses are built in a line form. Okay, the houses are mostly along transport routes such as road, railways, river, etc. Here, the diagram. The diagram. Okay, the buildings are arranged in lines. Linear settlements develop faster than the other settlements because of the convenience of proximity with a transport route. So this is a diagram. The, the buildings are or the houses are straight in line. Okay, so our key, if you see this house, and then this one, the diagram here is what our river. So let's go to importance of settlements. Let's discuss the importance of linear settlement, um, the spare settlement, and um, um, nucleated settlement. So one. Okay, settlements make it possible for people to live with other people. That is important of settlement. Two, through settlements, people do not live in vacuum. Three, settlements protect people from bad weather and dangerous animals like snakes. 
for people living together can pool their resources together to do business. Five, settlements make it possible for the import for the people to watch out for one another. This means that the people live in safety. Now that we've done with the um, importance of settlement, let's go to features to consider in choosing a good settlement. So let us discuss features that one should consider in choosing a good settlement that would make life easier and comfortable. So one, before choosing a good settlement, you must check whether the place is free or flat. There is no water when, it's, when there is heavy rain. The, there will not be odd flats. Two, there should be easy access to local raw material. Three, you must have access to local water supply for drinking and washing. Four, you must have access to good, look, um, good routes and transportation. Five, in choosing a good settlement, you must have access to building materials. And last one, six, you have to check the quality of the soil before choosing or building your house. So this one brings us to the close of the lesson.